Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Global Connections. Today, we're going to talk about the role of the United States in helping Israel and how well it is doing, how well the United States is doing so far uh, with our old friend, Dr. Rupmati Khandaka. And I have my plus cap on today, Rupmati, um, because I want, to, I want to give you some news. And just in case the cable and network news doesn't mention it, and they often don't mention it when they should, I want to just report the news. If you haven't heard it and you should hear it every day, Hamas butchered 1,400 men, women, children, babies, and seniors, and grievously wounded thousands of other Israelis on October 7th. That should be repeated every day. This is the worst violence against Jews since the Holocaust. To be clear, they cut unborn babies out of pregnant mothers, beheaded the babies, then beheaded the mothers. They still hold more than 230 terrified hostages in their tunnels. Jews don't do that kind of thing. But the reaction in the Arab communities uh, has been to celebrate in support of Hamas and what it has done. We actually have the same reaction, believe it or not, in the United States, and especially on college campuses, where students pull down and destroy posters of the 230 hostages. Students who presumably study history and who are blatantly and increasingly anti-Semitic. Sad commentary on the state of higher education in this country. Israel continues to try to eliminate Hamas because Hamas tries to uh, eliminate Jews and the state of Israel at every moment, just like Iran. Uh, Hamas continues with support and weapons from Iran to fight against Israel and ultimately destroy the state of Israel and to use everyone in Gaza as a human shield, and to use humanitarian structures and supplies in Gaza to assist them in continuing to fire rockets into Israel <clears throat> as far north as Tel Aviv, and to blame Israel for Hamas's attempts um, to eliminate Israel. Um, this is uh, really, and, and its attempts to use, uh, you know, human shields throughout Gaza. So that's the news. Um, there's other news, of course. Um, you know, one Israeli was actually rescued uh, today. But uh, the basic news is what I read, and that should always be top of mind. Don't you agree, Rupmati? Aloha, Jay. And it's to hear such, you know, unbiased news is a rarity right now. You know, anti-Semitism is uh, fashion, and they're doing this. They're not understanding. They're playing with lives. They don't understand that they're promoting terrorism. They don't understand that Hamas is a terrorist organization out to eliminate Israel from the map. And it was a terror attack, Jay. I mean, the kind of shielding that is going on and calling for humanitarian pauses and humanitarian aid. How do you expect Israel to not defend its people? What do they want to say that they want to self-sacrifice uh, uh, Israeli people, what should the government do if it doesn't act in this way? And after acting in the, uh, you know, in self-defense, Jay, self-defense against a terrorist attack is being portrayed as, you know, uh, atrocities against the vulnerable. Hamas is a terrorist organization, cannot be repeated less, Jay. I mean, the atrocities that they have done are really savage. Even animals have a heart, but these people have shown no heart. And the time that Israel is taking to uh, defend its people, it's not a war between countries. It's not a land for, uh, it's not a, a fight for land. It's a fight to save own lives, Jay. And this is this is the problem in the media. When you have put your press cap on, it feels um, it is uh, um, reporting done, which is straight. But you will have, uh, you know, uh, pictures splattered of Palestine uh, hospitals and people, but you don't understand there are tunnels of Hamas which are opening there. There are uh, Hamas uh, operatives going on in civilian encounters. How can you expect the Israel army to differentiate between civilian and um, uh, Hamas territory when they have, they are using their own people as shields to carry out their operations or defend themselves? Israel has done the right thing by saying, civilians, come out. We want to carry out an operation to eliminate Hamas. And today we saw 
Prime Minister Netanyahu said that just as the Pearl Harbor, U.S. would not stop. Israel will not stop till the aim of the uh, counter-offensive of eliminating Hamas is not done with. So it's a very clear-cut objective. Before that, if you want to cry and make a hue and uh, this about uh, uh, you know, uh, Hamas using civilian shields and portraying that as uh, atrocities, that is not going to be the case, Jay. Because leaving Hamas now would be meaning meaning to have a, a foreseeable attack in the future. So that cannot be afforded. So, so Mati, the title of our show is, um, you know, uh, uh, what's the role of the United States here? You know, we have a couple of carriers and a number of destroyers that have uh, come on the uh, Mediterranean side and the, and the Red Sea side and maybe the Persian Gulf and the, uh, the Arabian Sea. I'm not sure exactly where they are. Um, but they've they've entered the area, <clears throat> and uh, they've they've uh, been attacked uh, in in Syria, I think, and they've they've responded to that. I'm not sure how serious those attacks are or those responses, but they actually have responded. The question is uh, really, what is Joe Biden doing here? He's brought yeah. he's brought at least the the uh, the possibility of American military power into the region. But uh, his uh, rhetoric and his rhetoric has been, you know, we will stand with Israel, although it seems like uh, because it's a growing chorus in this country and uh, other countries in in uh, the Middle East uh, that the that the Israelis uh, should stop their um, attack on, on Gaza. Uh, he is um, increasingly telling Israel to cool it and not to attack uh, Gaza. Um, so. You know, you really start wondering what what is Joe up to? What is he doing? What is he? How does he see his role? And in fact, how is his role playing out in this war? Any thoughts? Yeah, Jay. Now let's go a little bit deeper. See, U.S. and Israel go back a long, long way from 1948, when uh, U.S. was the first country to to acknowledge Israel as soon as it was formed, within moments, right? And uh, we go down. Uh, different president when President Nixon in 1973 uh, went to Israel about the Egypt war. President Biden was part of the as a, he part of the entourage as a senator who visited Egypt and Middle East. So his story starts about Middle East from 1973, and uh, as we know, he was part of the by uh, Obama administration, and Obama used to call uh, Israel occupation of uh, West Bank. So uh, you kind of, that was the phase that he was in under the Obama. And when Trump came in, we saw the Abraham Accords where uh, Trump wanted Israel to befriend uh, Bahrain, Morocco, UAE. And when Trump, uh, when Biden came into power, he has continued, he disagrees with Trump on everything, but he has continued this Abraham Accords and tried to ma maintain friendly ties with Saudi Arabia also. So this kind of uh, history that Biden has in the Middle East is not within one year or two years of his presidency. It's since 1973. He understands Middle East politics. And that is the reason as soon as this terrorist attack was uh, announced and it was shocked, he came as a friend. He held Israel's back and he sent in no, uh, not one. Now there are seven uh, of uh, U.S. carrier ships, the best carrier, most sophisticated aircraft carrier was sent, the Gerald, uh, Gerald Ford, and F-35, uh, 15, F-10, all these were sent. So this kind of backup that Israel has helps it to offend, uh, you know, uh, to carry out, defend its property when you have U.S. Why we do, why do we need U.S.? It's a very uh, logical and very straightforward uh, answer to that because six countries are always waiting to pounce on Israel. Whether Israel is wrong, whether Israel is right, their aim is uh, through their rhetoric. When the Iran says, I want to wipe Israel off of the map. I mean, this is not a small uh, threat. It is uh, uh, when they say, uh, you know, racism, they want to finish off an entire race. They want to wipe the country off the map. This is the kind of environment that Israel has to live in. And if US was not there to back Israel, 
today these six countries would have jumped in and long before gaza west bank you know you have anything israel would have not been there i mean that is a that is coexisting which is happening but you can't coexist with terrorist state when your civilian population is threatened every day every uh, hour and every without any uh, consideration of age sex and what is that race that becomes difficult to survive and um, israel's battle of self survival is only strengthened by the us now the united states gives uh, israel a qualitative military edge now that means that israel has access to us uh, military uh, before any of the neighboring antagonistic nations that gives israel an edge now israel has developed the iron dome as we know it that is for short range but with and that was de developed by um, israel itself but the munitions that come in they were reinforced by uh, uh, us for this war as soon as this happened then they are developing the david sling which is for uh, longer range missiles then they have the arrow series arrow 1 arrow 2 arrow 3 which is for short term long term and uh, medium range respectively so these kind of uh, collaborations are not just for fun jay they are for security purposes for strategic purposes because when you are an ally and when you have a uh, uh, ties that bind you together and you are facing a antagonistic enemy who is out there to wipe you out that becomes uh, very necessary to have friendships and strategic <laughs> friendships are so important in geopolitics jay so that's the reason why us is an important ally of israel and always there. but uh, joe biden also is telling them has told them from the beginning um not to make an incursion uh, to hold back on the incursion they said they were going to make um to um limit it uh, to avoid things that might be treated as um you know against humanitarian causes um and he is uh, increasing that that rhetoric also what effect does that have yeah jc now uh, international pressure building up and social media and uh, biased uh, news reporting uh, telling us that israel is doing a bad thing that doesn't work because israel has to enter a catacomb of uh, tunnels hidden under civilian territory we discussed it in our last program that civilian uh, shields that they have used now um, and everybody makes a very big hue and cry that israel has to follow international humanitarian law and to follow international humanitarian law means israel has to take up the task of differentiating between uh, civilian and military targets did the hamas terrorists do that jay? did they just attack military establishments they went from house to house if israel wanted to not consider humanitarian law they could have sent the aircraft and carpet bomb the entire gaza city you have to take into account that they have given warnings please civilians have to vacate on their own they have given voluntary vacation because they need to bomb and uh, plug in these access points of these tunnels because there are weapons there are there are more hamas terrorists inside and they are making a, a bet that they would escape it by whiling away the time staying put in their places so that this kind of media offensive on israel makes it bow down to pressure but i'm you know, i'm think that when nathan yahu speaks in um, that he would not bow down to pressure like this and it, it's like the same thing what us would have done in the pearl harbor or uh, with the 911 uh, terrorist attacks is the same thing that israel would do so aim is very clear offensive is very uh, targeted they are trying to minimize uh, uh, civilian uh, casualties but hamas is a relentless enemy j we don't have to make mistake about that that if you leave them today they would come back again and i don't think israel can afford another october 7 no i agree for many reasons so <clears throat> what about the united nations and his fellow guterres uh, is uh, every day constantly uh, oh. telling israel they should um, they should not attack they should uh, make make peace 
Um, and um, you know, that's that's really interesting, given the fact that the United Nations really hasn't done anything. Um, yes. You know, in 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 this matter, they they uh, the the only um, uh, resolution that was suggested uh, was that they should make peace. But the United Nations does not condemn the atrocities, which it was really extraordinary. It was my news piece at the beginning. The United Nations has never condemned these atrocities, and yet it is telling the Israelis to um, not attack, not attack Ham Hamas. Um, your thoughts about the participation uh, of the United Nations and how that affects Joe Biden's approach? Yeah, Jim. Like we always discussed, uh, one of the resolutions that uh, of Gaza, which had 144 in support, 44 against and 20 abstaining. So this kind of resolution, I'm glad to say that there is a veto in the hands of the U.S. Otherwise, we would have had something like this. The U.N. should be part of the solution. Today, it is becoming part of the problem. There is humanity. They want access to open up humanitarian aid. When you have Antonio Guterres saying that there is occupation of Palestine, that becomes a bias statement. Don't you agree? It has to be neutral. It has to have both sides of the uh, part. If you don't mention Hamas in the resolution, how do you expect a terrorist attack to be uh, involved in it? You just delete uh, Hamas. It's not right. In the plenaries where we discuss which word to put in the drafting, they have to put the word Hamas. This is Hamas has caused the terrorist attack on Israel. And if you conveniently remove Hamas, how effective of an organization are going to you going to be? How can you get a, a coalition of countries to help anybody when you yourself are not clear of what the problem is and what the solution is? Humanitarian uh, access to Gaza, when Israel is trying to uh, vet the uh, militants out of Gaza, is not right. They should have been that you provide a passage to the uh, civilians. Go for that, not push in aid. Now, you know, the UN warehouses were looted. If they were so, uh, what is that? Uh, sufficient in uh, distribution of the funds and of the uh, stuff that comes in to the civilians, I don't think the civilians would have gone and looted the warehouses. So there is a kind of... Uh, uh, setback in the UN system, not only at the warehouse level, at the headquarter level too. I'm glad you mentioned that, Rupmani. I think it's extraordinary um, that um, the UN, uh, with all this international pressure and pressure from Guterres, it uh, delivers all this humanitarian aid, and, and then the aid gets looted. Um, yes. you know, who is watching the store on that? Where is the United Nations? They have a warehouse that gets looted. And so people take what they want. This is perfectly Gaza. Um, yes. I, I, I just have trouble understanding that. The other thing is the International Court in The Hague. Um, there was an application made for investigation of war crimes. Uh, that is the war crime, the Hamas war crimes against Israel. It has been ignored. Um, but applications have been made for the war crimes against, um, you know, the Palestinians in Gaza. And apparently they're taking that up. What's wrong with the international court? Um, this is the same court that didn't do anything yet, not a thing about Ukraine. So it's just, to me, it's just another example of the same failure by the United Nations and its accessory branches. Um, I find it extraordinary um, that on the one hand, you have an investigation uh, and on the other, you don't. Um, but let me go, let me go uh, you know, to the, the, this extraordinary um, Airport scene, you, you read about mm. that, uh, in southern Russia, um, where the people all of a sudden are uh, you know, waiting to attack Jews off an, an uh, El Al, uh, uh, air, uh, you know, air, airplane from Tel Aviv um, by the thousands. <clears throat> and I find, I find that interesting. I'd be interested in your comments about it. This is, in fact, Russia. Um, yes. And in Russia, if you want to make a protest, uh, any kind of protest, or at least a protest against Mr. Putin, uh, you will be arrested in a matter of seconds and thrown into jail in a matter of seconds. But for some reason, this big protest at the airport uh, against Israel, there were no police to stop it, nobody of any consequence. I mean, later they did stuff, but uh, initially 
And until it hit the global news, they didn't do anything. Uh, so I, I find that is really hypocritical on Russia's part. Your thoughts? Now, uh, Jay, this happened, uh, this extraordinary, uh, the word is right, uh, airport scenes were Dagestan. Dagestan mm. is a province in Russia where 83% are Muslim. Now, Islamophobia is a real thing because uh, you see real attack. Now, suppose the plane was filled with Jews. They are, they are saying, where are the Jews? You know, how, uh, how racist or how targeted can you get? If suppose there was a plane full of uh, Jews, that mob, mob mentality of uh, harming would not have spared anyone, Jay. And uh, just imagine now this kind of uh, hatred is going to spread, spread to roads, to vehicles, to public places. This is not right. Till you get a befitting uh, counter-offensive, they want to make take it to crusades. Uh, it's going to be difficult for them. Because when they take out rallies uh, you know, supporting Hamas, not now, maybe in a few days, you will have Jews coming on the streets, uh, Christians coming on the streets, Hindus coming on the streets to support Israel. Because this kind of one-sided uh, support or one-sided offensive against uh, Jews and support for Hamas, uh, you know, I told you in the first time, there should have been a univocal uh, uh, condemnation of the terrorist attacks. That didn't happen. It became taking sides. How can you take sides on, uh, on a terrorist attack? Did On 9-11, was there a survey made? Whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the terrorists or are you in the, on the side of uh, America? It was a terrorist uh, attack and it was condemned. Same way, October 7 was a terrorist attack. Hamas should be condemned by all nations irrespective of religion. If you bring in religion as the uh, bargaining counter and say because of religion I support Hamas, that becomes totally wrong. It's uncalled for and it, it doesn't serve any religion any good because no religion endorses killing of innocent. Never. Hmm. You know, but you know those those countries, the Arab countries, the Muslim countries in the Middle East, they all have this kind of uh, disruption, and it's yes. organized. And I'm sure they use social media, and somebody is fanning the flames. Flames, probably Iran, probably Russia, uh, maybe Turkey. Turkey is involved. Erdogan's involved. Uh, the support actively support Hamas. Um, so what you have is um, you know sort of a global. The world's on fire, at least half of it anyway, maybe more. And uh, this affects Biden. It affects Joe Biden. I, I think it affects his decision process because, you know, for example, the Times reported today that uh, Israel had determined it would continue the attack, which seems to some extent successful so far. Um, but Joe Biden is warning Israel again um, not to press it. And I'm saying, why is that happening? You know, a few days ago, he... His rhetoric was much stronger in favor of Israel, and I don't understand it except to say that all this tumult in the, in the, in the Middle East is affecting his decision process. He doesn't want to be on the wrong side of the Muslim countries for uh, diplomacy and geopolitics. Do you agree? Yes, yes. Because, see, uh, now Russia is busy with the Ukraine war. Otherwise, we would have had a head-on-head -head, uh, um, <clears throat> confrontation with the U.S., and uh, Russia, like it happened with Syria, they were supporting Syria wholeheartedly. And I'm sure they would have jumped into this also. But right now, Putin is a bit busy, so it's a bit of balance. And China, who has come in with six fleets, uh, makes Joe Biden's uh, process a little bit difficult because he was the one who was trying mm -hmm. to foster good relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia so that you could have the economic road from uh, India to Europe. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, progress in this state, uh, in this uh, area of uh, friendly relations. But now, because of this, you know, you have a little bit of imbalance in foreign relations from the perspective of Joe Biden, because he was trying to prepare, uh, like we say, the Abraham Accord of Trump. He was, uh, what is that? He was accentuating it in such a way that it would include Saudi Arabia also and UAE also in that. So uh, Joe Biden has got a difficult task, but I'm sure 
when he made the decision of sending troops. Now, in public, in media, he has to say this, that there has to be a humanitarian pause, and it's absolutely okay. Even Israel has not said that we would uh, offend uh, civilians. Even Israel is agreeing to the humanitarian pause. Even Israel is agreeing to humanitarian aid. But after they finish Gaza. Now, Jay, we know that when they made, uh, after they finish Hamas, we know that they made in Gaza a place and there was funding allowed into Gaza. A lot of funding. We know a thousand billion dollars come in. Uh, One billion dollar comes in aid. The cost of the tunnels is how much? 1.5 billion. So the uh, funds that came into Gaza did not go for a civilian uh, development. It went for building tunnels and uh, strengthening the Hamas uh, outfit. So Israel didn't make a mistake that time. Uh, humanitarian aid was allowed. Uh, finance was allowed. Everything was allowed. What happened about? It? Now is the time that they're acting in self-defense and they're saying, no, we want to clear it. So this time humanitarian aid is stopped temporarily because it was not used for the right reasons. Well, I've got to be careful about sending many more money, that's for sure. And if you're going to have humanitarian aid, you've got to be sure that it goes the right place. One, you know, one thing, uh, it's, it's uh, ever clear that um, no Arab country wants the Palestinians. No Arab country, not Egypt, not oh, yeah. Jordan, not Syria. Nobody wants the, 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 um, the Palestinians because they're, they're effectively dangerous. Um, they don't build an economy. Uh, they, they operate out of hate. They teach their kids hate. Um, nobody, you know, wants to get educated or a job even. And, uh, you know, they're a burden. They're a burden and they're a risk. And Egypt does not want them for all those reasons. But uh, isn't it part of Joe Biden's role here to say to Egypt, hey, come on, can't you provide a place for them? They shouldn't be in Gaza because Gaza is, you know, it has Hamas and we, we can't afford to have Hamas. And the Israelis can't afford it and we can't afford it. What about you know, building some kind of encampment. You have the Sinai, which is a huge area. Why can't you give them some space in the Sinai? I guess he's afraid that they want to. They want to establish a separate country <laughs> in the Sinai, and Egypt will never get them out of there. Um, but query, why? Why doesn't Joe do something about you know finding a place for them? Joe Biden has a very daunting task in front of him because, like you said, none of them are ready to take them in. You have uh, Queen Raina of Jordan giving a very heartfelt speech. But when the time comes for Jordan to take in refugees, they shut their doors on them. And, uh, you know, Jordan, Egypt, Syria, they refuse to take their own br uh, brothers, brethren. Uh, why not? Take them in, give them shelter, give them humanitarian aid like Israel was doing for such a long time. Why have double standards, Jay? Why should just Israel suffer? You also help in uh, taking these terrorists in. See how they, you know, uh, Pakistan is one country which has bred terrorists to attack India, and now the terrorist problem eats themselves. You know, they bomb the country, Pakistan itself. Same thing will happen with these Palestinians when they take them inside. The terrorist organization, like you say, they inculcate children to be terrorists. So over a period of time, they will form this terrorist outfit in Egypt also, in Palestine also, Jordan also. You can change a person, but you can't change his mentality. The aptitude never changes. You know, a person's habits may change, but what is within him will never change. If a person is good, he will remain good. So that's the same thing with Hamas. It is a terrorist organization and it's inculcated to be that since birth. It's on their motherboard. It can't be deleted. So uh, these countries are refusing to take, and I think Joe Biden not interfering and not, let. I mean, Joe Biden is allowing the world to see that sympathy is from a distance. Sympathy is not concrete for them. Egypt, Iran, Iran also can afford to take, but they refuse to take. They just supply them with uh, suicide material and you do the suicide. But in another hmm. country, not in that country. Yeah, and they use the Palestinians. They use them too much. They're, 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 you know, they're just being used. And, and what's interesting is that you know, in the past, Israel would include Palestinians in its daily life: doctors, lawyers, uh, college professors, all over Israel. 
and and they had you know, jobs they could you know come into the, the body of Israel the economy of Israel and work and make a living and support their family you think that's going to happen now no, no. You know, 20,000 a day had, had jobs from, from Hamas to the, the kibbutzim just north of uh, uh, Gaza. Uh, you, and, and then they reported on the Israelis, and they told Hamas where they were, their names, their their places, uh, their, their, the names of their pets, for God's sake, um, right down to who can be killed. They spied on the Israelis. That, that was the payback. You give them a job, you give them a, a possibility of a participating in the Israeli economy, and they do that to you. You think Israel do that again? I wouldn't. But anyway, let's go to my last question, Rupmati, because we got to move on. We don't have any more time. And, and you have to give me a, just a beginning answer because this is a big okay. subject. What can okay. Joe Biden do with all these college kids? Um, oh. and, and for that matter, universities, including, including the administrators of these large universities, respected universities who are pulling posters of the, the hostages down and making, um, you know, protests uh, visibly in favor of Hamas, supporting the atrocities here in these United States. What can Joe Biden do about that? And is he doing it? Jay, when we saw educational institutes come out immediately in favor of Hamas, we understand at one glance that reasoning is absent in these educational institutions. They don't have reasoning power. They don't have logic. They don't have, you know, the senseless uh, uh, arguments that they're putting out, the tearing of the posters of kidnapped people. Do you know the tr uh, trauma that the families are going through, that you're sitting in another country and tearing down posters? Maybe that poster will not help you in any way, but have a sympathetic heart. And if you are st at, at student level, if you are this, imagine at decision-making level, what will your uh, heart be or what will your attitude towards the decision-making be? There is a big uh, uh, role that your mindset, your EQ plays in decision-making. And if the EQ and the IQ of these students is at this level, I think tomorrow is a very hard day for all of us. So, uh, and Joe Biden has to take in that educational institutions which promote terrorist at activities I bought the task, Jay. I mean, it's as simple as that. Cut the funding, uh, bring down the people who are uh, supporting Hamas as a terrorist organization to task. I mean, you bring them to ask, ask them questions, put inquiries on them, and the funding that they receive from governments is not justified, Jay. The loans that they get, the student scholarships that they get, the prestige of the uh, institution that you're studying in, they have no value for it. When you don't have sympathy for human life, I don't think you can study or you can uh, you can open a book. And Joe Biden, right now, I think, um, uh, Jay, this, this entire ordeal of uh, the Israel-Hamas uh, saga has brought in that Joe Biden has been an effective leader in the sense that he sent help immediately. He backed up Israel when it was needed. And uh, now taking care of domestic I think it's going to be difficult for him because it is ingrained in our society. And uh, bringing these people out to task is such a uh, thing because we have this curtailment of freedom of liberty, but under the guise of freedom of liberty, they are doing uh, freedom of speech. They are saying anything. And support for a terrorist organization makes you part, partly a terrorist. Thank you, Rupmati. I think you're right on, right on with all of your comments. It's so helpful to, to, to have your clarity here and think tech. Thank you so much, Rupmati Kandakar. We'll be back in a few days uh, with more from Rupmati about these hotspots in the world, not only including Israel, but also including Ukraine. Thank you so much, Rupmati. Thank you for having me, Jay. My pleasure. Aloha.